church, uh, the Sunday service, proceeding, coming before the great crusade. And I pray that today will be a foretaste in your life, in your family, in your profession, and the Lord in his great power will come to you and bless you through and through in Jesus' name. And I pray that every day you will join from here. And as you join, I'm telling you, it will be something great in your new life in Jesus' name. You'll be a new person. You'll be a new pastor. I, I, I will be a new pastor, a new parent, a new son, a new daughter, a new family, a new professional, and the work of your hand new. Success new. Everything new. Because of Jesus, the one and the only. He'll bless your life. Are you ready? Father, we thank you for our worship service. And we thank you for this year. All that you have been doing. All that you have been revealing. Lord, I pray, make us new. Through and through. Heart, spirit, soul, body, sight, hearing, walking, believing, everything and the performance of the Lord new in our lives in Jesus name take everything old the old sorrow the old suffering and the old attack and the old anxiety and the old worry and the old fear take the old away from our lives and bring in something new that we will become new personalities before you in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. We're coming today to the word of God. And if there is any subject we can learn, anything we can look into in the word of God it is about Jesus as we open the pages of the New Testament we meet Jesus and then you go on all the Gospels talk about Jesus and then Acts of the Apostles talk about Jesus as you open the epistles they talk about Jesus as we come to Revelation the last chapter the last word there Jesus and so it's important we're talking about Jesus today we're looking at the prophecy and purpose of bringing forth Jesus the prophecy and the purpose of bringing forth Jesus we're reading from Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins look at verse 22 it says now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord uh, of the Lord by the prophet saying in verse 23 behold a virgin shall conceive a virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. In verse 25, and knew her not till she had brought forth a firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Today, as we look at the prophecy and the purpose of bringing forth Jesus, we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the prophecies proclaimed before the birth of Jesus. Prophecies 
proclaimed before the birth of Jesus. Number two, purpose pronounced before bringing forth Jesus. Purpose pronounced before bringing forth Jesus. Number three, privileges provided for believers in Jesus. Let's look at number one. Number one, prophecies proclaimed before the birth of Jesus. Three things there. Number one, God's proclamation before bringing forth Jesus. And number two, great prophecies on the birth of Jesus. Number three, good promises and benefits from Jesus. Look at number one. Number one, God's proclamation before bringing forth Jesus. In Genesis chapter three, at the time of the fall, God himself declared and proclaimed. In Genesis chapter three, verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He was actually talking to the originator of that fall. He was talking to Satan and he said, I, the Almighty, will bring enmity, put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. In talking about her seed, not the seed of the man, but the seed of the woman, he's talking about the virgin birth that Christ will be born by a woman that had never known a man. And then it says, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The bruising of the heel is the crucifixion. And so at this time, from the very beginning, God himself proclaimed, there'll be the crucifixion, but then... The Lord said at that time, that seed of the woman shall bruise thy head. I want you to compare the bruising of the heel and the bruising of the head. When the heel is bruised, that doesn't kill really. And eventually Christ rose again because only the heel was bruised. And Bruising the heel means he'll come alive again. And he rose from the dead. But bruising the head, when the head is bruised, that means that the head is shattered, is scattered, is crushed, is totally devastated. And that means that that devil is put out of function. It will not function in your life. And then in Psalm 2, reading from verse 7, Psalm 2, verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Have you seen that son there? Capital S. And then it tells us in verse 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. That means that son of God will come and then his inheritance will be the heathen. The Jewish people made mistake. They thought that the coming of Christ was only for the Jews. But now here we are told, even before he came, that when he comes, he will have the Gentiles. He will have the heathen. I will give you an inheritance. The heathens and the uttermost part of the earth, uttermost part of the earth will be given to the Lord. That's why Jesus said, after he rose again, and he showed himself by many infallible proofs to those disciples, he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Listen to this. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea and in Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. That had been prophesied. And here is the declaration of the Almighty God Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. 
and then we're told in Luke, reading from verse, uh, reading from chapter 1, verse 26, and in six months, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. The angel Gabriel was sent from God. Who is angel Gabriel? Angel Gabriel is the, was the one standing in the presence of the Almighty God all the time. And then he got the revelation. And God said, go tell Mary the virgin. And then he came. And it said he came from God from unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And look at verse 27. It says to a virgin. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. In verse 28 it says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Verse 29, it tells us, And when she saw him, when she saw the angel, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, and thought in her mind, and meditated in her mind, what manner of salutation they should be. Then in verse 30, we're told, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. The angel knew her name because God had given that angel the name Mary. God knows your name. He will visit you. He will surprise you with the needed miracle. He says, For thou hast found favor with God. In verse 31. In verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Thou virgin shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name, shout it out, Jesus. And then in verse 32, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Now, the angel spoke about the first coming and then spoke about the second coming. It's at the second coming, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. The first coming at an end. At the cross of Calvary. And Jesus said on the cross, It is finished. And he gave up the ghost. The first coming at an end. But the second coming of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then in verse 34, it says, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man that confirms she was a virgin. And how shall this be? Look at verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Make the connection, Holy Ghost and power. Holy Ghost and power. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Every time and everywhere, the Holy Ghost and power are connected together. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have power. You have such power that no human skill can generate or even understand. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. God himself had proclaimed that Jesus will come before the bringing forth 
of Jesus. Look at number two. Number two is great prophecies of the birth of Jesus. Great, great prophecies. Prophecies beyond the understanding of human science. Prophecies beyond the writing of the history of man. Prophecies beyond the ability of man to carry out Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Look at chapter 9. Verse 6, unto us a child is born. I say, looking forward and seeing the fulfillment of that prophecy, it's like it's done already. He spoke like that because nothing by the world, nothing by the devil, nothing by man or by demon can stop this prophecy from being fulfilled. So it's as good as done. For all, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Look at that once again. Unto us a child is born, Bethlehem. And then some years after, unto us a son is given on the cross. And then millennia after. That means thousands of years after, the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's when he comes again. At this first coming, a child is born. At this first coming, unto us a son is given. And then at the second coming, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Father of Eternity. And the prince of peace even where he will be born had been named before he came Micah chapter 5 reading from verse 2 in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 but thou Bethlehem Ephrata though thou be little among the thousands of Judah yet out of thee shall come shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in israel out of bethlehem would he come to be ruler in israel and then it says whose goings forth have been from of old from everlasting that means jesus did not begin to exist at the time he was born he had been from all eternity. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Jesus said, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world began. He had been in all eternity before the world began because it's been from everlasting. Look at number three here. Number three is good promises and benefits from Jesus. Isaiah chapter 45, reading from verse 21, tell ye, and bring them to here, and bring them near, ye, let them take counsel together, who has declared this from ancient time, who has told it from that time. Have not I the Lord? There is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Verse 22 now. Look unto me and be ye saved. Look unto me and be ye delivered. Look unto me and be ye healed. Look unto me and be ye blessed. Look unto me and be ye forgiven. Look unto me and be ye set free. Look unto me and be ye transformed. Look unto me and be ye converted. Look unto me. All the blessings we have now for soul, for spirit, for body, 
for our family, for the future, even getting to heaven, all comes from Jesus Christ. Because he came and we believe, now we can be blessed. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Jeremiah 23, looking at verse 6, in his days, Judah shall be saved. In his days, in the days of that one to come, that is of the Lord Jesus Christ, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. He came for the first time. If they had accepted him then, they would have been saved. But now, they rejected him. He died on the cross. He will come again. And when he comes again, it says, Behold, Romans chapter 11, Israel shall be saved. And they will dwell safely. If you know the history of the children of Israel, at present, they are not dwelling safely. At his first coming, they said, let his blood come upon us. And then 70 years after that, General Titus came, wiped them out, and they were scattered all over the world. But then the time is coming. There will be the time of Jacob's trouble. After that time of the great revelation, then they'll be expecting the Messiah. And when he comes, in his days, at that time, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby it shall be called the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. He that knew no sin became sin, the sin of rain for us, that we might be called the righteousness of God. The Lord, our righteousness. Look at Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression. He has come. He died on the cross to finish the transgression. Your transgression finished in Jesus' name. And to make an end of sins. He came to make an end of sins because he shall save his people from their sins. And then he says to make reconciliation for iniquity. He, God, has reconciled the world unto himself by the Lord Jesus Christ and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the Holy One. You see, all these had been said before Christ came and Christ came, think about it, no other person in history has fulfilled all those prophecies given about the one to come. Only Jesus and the angel affirmed and confirmed that Jesus will be the fulfillment of those prophecies. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two is the purpose pronounced before bringing forth Jesus. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the purpose, the purpose pronounced before bringing forth Jesus, look at this, and she shall bring forth a son. That was fulfilled. What would have happened? Isaiah said, unto us a child is born. That child will be a son, not a daughter. Unto us a son is given. What if Mary had given birth to a girl, female, daughter? impossible because it had been prophesied from the Old Testament. It had been pronounced by God himself that the one coming will be a son. And when the virgin conceived and brought forth, it was a son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And she shall bring forth a son. 
whatever the Lord has promised, predicted, proclaimed, prophesied for your life, it will come exactly in that way. Nobody will turn the promise and the prediction for your life upside down in Jesus' name. Son will not be changed to a daughter. Where's your amen? amen? The promise of God in your life will be intact. If it is not done yet, wait, it's coming. And she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Three things here. Thorough redemption from all sins. Number two, total recovery from all sicknesses. Number four, timeless release from Satan's subjugation. They are yours. Redemption, yours. Recovery, yours. Release, yours. They are mine. Now, Christ the Savior. Christ the Lord, he has come. Not only that he came to Bethlehem, not only that he came to Judah, not only that he came to Israel, he has come into our heart. I said he has come into our heart. The moment you believe, you know, he said, Behold, I stand at the door, I knock. And if anyone opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and fellowship with him when christ the savior enters salvation enters and that salvation teaches us that denying ungodliness ungodliness will try to come again will say no you cannot enter anymore because salvation has come and the savior lives on the inside of me and then we are able to receive what they lost it says we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. That's what Christ did at his first coming. Look at verse 13 now. Verse 13 looking for, as he talks about what he did in the first coming, then he jumps to the second coming. He says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He says he came once, he rose again, he's gone to heaven, he's coming again and when he comes again he will find you ready. I'll be ready. You'll be ready in Jesus name. Now let's come back, let's come back to the redemption from all sins he gives us now. That's in verse 14. He said in verse 14, who gave himself on the cross. When he came the first time, he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Make it personal. That he might redeem me from all iniquity, if it has not happened, it will happen. What Jesus paid for on your behalf will not be left in the market. You'll bring that thing back home. Somebody went to the market, to the store, and he paid the full price for a commodity. And he paid it for you. And your name is already reaching there. And then he came back home and he told you, I purchased it for you. It's right there. Go and claim it for yourself. Well, although it is fully paid for, if you stay at home, if you don't go to that place of purchase, you will not see. But Christ has redeemed us has purchased this for us redeemed us from all iniquity you claim it this morning it is yours in jesus name and purify unto himself a peculiar people what does that mean a peculiar people in your family 
Daddy was like this. And everybody expected you will be like that. But you are so different, peculiar. In your family, mommy was like this, and everybody thought you'll be like mommy, act like mommy, and do all those, uh, you know, things that mommy did. But now you're totally different because Christ lives on the inside of you. You are peculiar. In your place of work, this is how everybody works, and this is the lie they tell, and these are the things they do, and then you come in and the lies they tell, the forms they feel, and the right, wrong information, and the time of presumption they always put there, and it is always wrong. You come in there, and you write the right, correct thing, and you live the right way, and you only take the money that belongs to you, and they say, what kind of man is this? What kind of woman is this? Peculiar. I am peculiar. I said I am peculiar. You know, in your community, all the people, they carry placards, they're doing this and that, and then you walk majestically away from them. Hey, come on here. Everybody is doing it. I am not like everybody. You will not be like everybody. Peculiarity in your life, in Jesus' name. It says, he purified unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You know, people wonder that when the deeper life started, we evangelized, we ran up and down, and now more than 40 years after, then we're still running, we're zealous of good works. When I look at you, I see the fulfillment of the sacrifice of Christ in your life. You are not lukewarm, you are not dull, you are not dead, you are not like a log of wood dead, and you are not like, you know, you are tired. The older you are getting, the more strength you are getting, and the more zeal you have. And that zeal will always be in your life, show on your face, and show in your heart, and show in your action in Jesus' name. The way you are, the Lord make you to increase, you will not decrease in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two, total recovery from all sicknesses. Total recovery from all sicknesses. When Christ came, he came to give us total healing complete deliverance and he recovers us from all sicknesses every sickness in your life because of the name of jesus vanish away in jesus name and let's look at isaiah chapter 53 and i'm looking at verse 4 surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows surely he has borne our griefs Grief in your life, he has carried it away. Sorrow, he has carried that away. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And then in verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, personal, personal, and with his stripes, you are healed in Jesus' name. Let me show you one verse. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 24. Look at this and claim it for yourself. Before I read it, say, it is mine. Say it aloud. Say it from your heart. If God can keep you out of sickness for one day, He can keep you out of sickness for one week. If God, Christ, can keep you out of sickness for one week, He can keep you out of sickness for one month. Hmm? 
if Christ can keep you out of sickness for one month, he can keep you out of sickness for this whole year. Let me read it to you now. The, and the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. When God takes care of that iniquity, then sickness gone in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Look at the connection again, connection again, Holy Ghost and with power. The Holy Ghost abides inside you. Power abides inside you. Look at Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing and healing and healing all that are oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Number three there. Number three, timeless release from Satan's subjugation. If the devil could have his way, he'll want everybody tied down, everybody paralyzed, everybody blindfolded, everybody anemic, everybody powerless, everybody his slave in subjugation to him. But thank God, the Lord Jesus by sacrifice at Calvary has come to release everyone. I am released. I am released from Satan's subjugation. Look at 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. It says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. And then it says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. For what purpose? That he might destroy the works of the devil. In your life, the works of the devil destroyed. In your family, the works of the devil destroyed. If your wife is sick right now, that sickness, is it the work of God or the work of the devil? The Lord will destroy that work of the devil on your wife in Jesus' name. I am losing my husband. I'm losing my husband. She is bedridden. Is that the work of God or the work of the devil? The Lord destroyed the work of the devil on your husband in Jesus' name. You will not cry. You will rejoice. You will give testimony because for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Look at chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God, she that is begotten of God, keepeth himself, keepeth herself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Toucheth him not. You're going out, you're coming in, that wicked one will not touch you. At night, when you're sleeping, in the day, when you're awake, that wicked one will not touch you. That's why Christ came. That's the purpose Christ came, so that he will make us to be born again, begotten of God, and then that wicked one will not touch your kidney, will not touch your livers, will not touch your lungs, will not touch your eyesight, will not touch your hearing, will not disorganize your brain. 
your brain will not fly away from you while you have a good work you need to think right your brain will not give up on you in jesus name that wicked one touches him not look at verse 21 it says little children keep yourselves from idols the lord confirm it in your life point number three now privileges provided for believers in jesus privileges provided for believers in jesus when you believe on the lord jesus christ what are the privileges the lord himself writes to your account and he says that one is born again that daughter is born again that woman is born again because of that i write all these benefits to their account this is what you have you see other people may have something reaching to their account but they have not gone to claim it i heard of you know somebody who had one large amount of money but she did not know and she was living in penury she was actually dying of hunger and starvation and so one of the leaders in the church not this church visited her and saw something on the wall like framed um, not photograph a uh, document and the pastor said sister can I break down this document and study it that you have framed? And she said, yes, pastor. And the pastor looked at that. Somebody that this woman worked for when she was younger, that person that she worked for now had died. But before he died, he wrote something in the will and then presented to that woman large amount of money but the woman was ignorant and she just framed it and she appreciated that what that man i worked for what he wrote down before he died and just framed it on the wall and the pastor took that thing to the bank and said is this uh, inheritance still available? They said, yes, we've been waiting for the woman. Can you find her? And then she went to call the woman, took the woman to the bank, and then she got large amount of money. Jesus already had inheritance for you before he left. And then some people, they frame that, bring it down from the wall, come and claim it today. It is mine. I said it is mine. And then if you are living in spiritual material poverty, that must change today. What benefits or privileges do we have as believers in Jesus? Number one, salvation. Salvation. Acts chapter 16, verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Full salvation is waiting for everyone. And as you believe, it is yours in Jesus' name. Number two, righteousness. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 21. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. When Jesus himself teaches you, he will tell you, he will show you, I provided this for you, I gave you this already, you are a beneficiary to this. Look at verse 22, it says that he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. Verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renew while has come then verse 24 verse 24 says and that she put on the new man 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Righteousness is mine. Righteousness is mine. Number three, deadness to sin. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Dead indeed. Dead, we're not sure. Push him, knock him, pinch him. Looks like he's dead. Do more. Dead indeed. It's not responding, it's dead. You know, a man that had been an alcoholic, a man, a smoker, a man, a womanizer. Now he's dead, and you bring alcohol, and you shout, free alcohol. The man is dead. He doesn't have any attraction to alcohol. Alcohol doesn't have any attraction to him anymore. When Christ came, and Christ saved us, the benefit we have, the privilege we have, is now we are dead indeed unto sin. Give me a good amen. amen. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In verse 12, it says, Let not sin, therefore, because you are dead to sin. Let, sin, let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that is, you obey it in the laws thereof. Number four, healing and health. I am healed. I am well. If you are well, you'll say it like a testimony. Confirmed in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter, chapter 8, verse 7. Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. That's the benefit we have. That's the privilege we have in Christ's coming. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. The word you are hearing will heal you completely. Yeah. Verse 10, in verse 10, Jesus, when Jesus had it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith no not in israel we'll be hearing the word of god how will i do what will i do so that christ will bear witness of me i have not found so great faith no not in israel how can you have faith and that faith will grow and then you'll so manifest that faith and your faith will be a shield around you that sickness problem sorrow will never take root in your life the word of god brings faith faith comes by hearing hearing the word of god if you need faith for healing Look at the word that talks about healing in the Bible and the sure way in which Christ brings that healing. Hear it, hear it, hear it again. If there is a message from the crusade, a message that we're giving on faith, that when people had that message, we prayed and then great miracles happened. Take that, take that message, listen over and over and over, Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God, one day your faith will be greater than ever before. And then Christ will say concerning you, I have never found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And healing will come your way. Deliverance will come your way. All that weakness, all that infirmity will pass away from your body in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as thou hast believed. As thou 
as believe this morning as we conclude the service and then you are going back home as thou as believe so be it done unto thee salvation be done unto thee righteousness be done unto thee deadness to sin be done unto thee healing and health be done unto thee and the servant was healed in the self same hour that's mine number five fruitfulness fruitfulness john chapter 15 reading from verse 1 I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. Verse 2, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. I will bear fruit. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. More fruit. This year, more fruit. In your life, you will not be barren. More fruit. In your family, you'll not be barren, more fruit. In the work of your hand, you'll not be barren, more fruit. In soul winning, you will not be barren, more fruit in Jesus' name. Number six, all desirable blessings. Anything you desire, you say, for this new year. I want this new year to be different from the old year. And this is what I desire. It is done. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all. For you. For you. I said for you. For us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Looks like the Lord is going to put a smile on your face even today. And the rest of your life, there will be joy, there will be possession, there will be performance in Jesus' name. Number seven, sanctification. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people. He will sanctify us. He'll sanctify your family. He'll sanctify your wife. He'll sanctify your husband. He'll sanctify every one of us in Jesus' name. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Look at verse 13. Let us go forth, therefore. It's for everybody. Let us go forth, therefore. Don't stay behind and say, I can never be sanctified. Why not? If you are not the one to do it. It is Christ himself who is to do it. He will do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him. Unto him. Unto him. Without the camp, bearing his reproach. Verse 14 for here we have no continuous city, but we we'll seek one to come. Number eight is divine nature. Second Peter chapter one, reading from verse three. Second Peter chapter one, verse three. According as his divine power he has given unto us, look at that, all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue he has called you to glory no shame in your life and no defeat in your life the devil in the past maybe rubbed your nose on the ground no more glory and virtue in your life in jesus name Verse 4, it says in verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Nine, number nine, in the baptism 
in the Holy Ghost. The baptism in the Holy Ghost. Immersion in the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 3, verse, chapter 7, verse 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, that's the qualification. If any man thirst, he desires, he's hungry, he's thirsty, he wants the overwhelming, enveloping power of the Holy Ghost. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38, it says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, but they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But it's coming. Power, I said, is coming on you. Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you and the power of the highest will perform great things in your life and through your life in Jesus' name. Number 10, power unlimited. Power unlimited. What if this year from today, you think of doing something and then the power, the strength, the wisdom, the finance, the provision you need to do that thing, anything that God has put in your hand, everything is available. That's what will happen this year. Surplus, surplus, unlimited power that every good thing the Lord has directed you to do, they will be done. And you will not say, I wanted to do it, but there's no power. I wanted to do it, but there's no strength. I wanted to do it, but there's no ability. Divine ability has come upon your life. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy over all the power of the enemy the enemy that will try to stop you from making progress the lord gives you power over all the power of the enemy you become unstoppable i become unstoppable say it, say it i become unstoppable you will be an achiever in jesus name nothing will stop your spiritual progress, material progress, professional progress in Jesus' name. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. No arrow will catch you. No affliction will catch you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you in Jesus' name. And then you will finish well here. Then number 11, the rapture, the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which live in Jesus will God bring with sin. Verse 15, it says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not proceed prevent them which are asleep. In verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then in verse 17, then we which are alive, you are there. We which are alive, you are included in this. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so shall I. And so shall I ever 
be with the Lord. Your future is bright. Look at now number 12, heaven. Heaven is your goal. Heaven is your destiny. And the Lord saves you and sanctifies you and purifies you and gives you the zeal of a child of God and you are moving on. You are not looking back and eventually after a good life, a, so, a righteous life, a progressive life, a happy life, guess where you are going to be on the final day? Heaven will be your habitation. In John chapter 17, verse 8, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and they have known surely that I came out from thee, from heaven, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Verse 16, they are not of the world they are candidates for heaven they are not of the world even as i am not of the world in verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth verse 24 it said father i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am where is jesus now Stephen said, I, I see the heavens opened, and I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He is in heaven, and Jesus prayed for you, and Jesus said that, Lord, all those that you have given me, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou loves me before the foundation of the world from the time of your salvation to the time of getting to heaven the lord will never leave you and all the promises and all the provisions and all the privileges of the children of god the lord confirm in your life in jesus name he came he died that you might live and this is the time of abundant life, of super abundant life for every one of us as we come to Christ and abide in Christ. And the goodness of the Lord will never stop in your life. I mean in your own life. Done. Performed. Finished. Finalized. Accomplished. Completed in Jesus' name. Rise up and receive what the Lord has provided for you. Rise up and receive what the Lord has provided for you. Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, He was predicted, He was coming, and now He has come. Why don't you tell the Lord, Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I know Jesus has been revealed for me. And Jesus had been given for me. He was born. And then he suffered on the cross of Calvary. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. It is for you. It is for you. It is for you. Let him rule in your life. Let him reign in your life. Let the government of your life be upon a shoulder that he will be in charge, he'll be in control. Salvation, he provides that all who will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He brings you salvation now. Receive whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he brings righteousness. Righteousness. He says, he took your sin. He took your shame. He took your weakness. That you might have his life. His righteousness. The Lord, our righteousness. Why don't you tell the Lord, drop the self-righteousness. Drop the worldly righteousness. Drop 
the human righteousness and say, Lord, here I am. Put your righteousness to my account. And Lord, transform my life and make me righteous. He gives us righteousness. And then he makes us dead indeed unto sin. That sin will not be attractive to you anymore. That you'll not be saying inside, ah, if I were not a Christian, I would have done that. If I were not a believer, I would have done that. You hate sin. And sin of any shape, of any size, of any description does not have any attraction to you dead indeed unto sin and he gives you healing and gives you health it's what he has purchased already healing that's your inheritance that's your right that's what he's given unto you he bought it and purchased it on your behalf and you can now say, by his stripes, I am healed. And then he keeps you healthy. If you can be healthy for one day, you can be healthy for one week. If you can be healthy for one week, you can be healthy for one month. If you can be healthy for one month, for the rest of the year, you can be healthy a whole year. Fruitfulness. You detest barrenness. Barrenness will be taken away. You abide in him. He abides in you. That whatsoever you ask, that he will grant. And he'll make you fruitful. He'll give you the wisdom to be fruitful. The intelligence to be fruitful. The revelation and vision to be fruitful, the wisdom and the ability and skill to be fruitful in the work of your hand, in your Christian life, you'll bear fruit. In soul winning, you'll bear fruit, much fruit, more fruit in your life. All desirable blessings, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive. And you shall have, and you will not go empty-handed any day. Every prayer you pray this morning, every morning, any time, you believe that you receive, and it is yours. Sanctification is available for you. He purifies the heart. He sanctifies the heart. He so desired it, he prayed for you divine nature it brings that divine nature for you and he said the kind of nature he had and you walk this life victoriously more than a conqueror he gives you that same kind of nature the divine nature and the power of the holy ghost the power of the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, the immersion in the Holy Ghost, the enveloping of the Holy Ghost, it shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. And the fear of witnessing will be taken away from your life. Power unlimited behold i give unto your power receive receive i give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and this year as you're making progress in your life this year as you desire as you claim as you stand on the promises of god that cannot fail nothing shall by any means hurt you and when he shall come when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive the militant church 
the triumphant church the church without spot without wrinkle we which are life shall be caught up together with them you will not miss the chance in jesus name heaven 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 will be your final habitation you will live with god with christ in the midst of innumerable angels rejoicing forever and ever and the lord will wipe all tears away no more night no more sorrow no more death no more heartache for the former things are passed away and the almighty god says behold i make all things new you have started a journey and every day will be bright brighter brightest and when we get over there it will be the brightest in jesus name we pray children of god raise up your hand and believe that this is going to be a turning point in your life even from this day there'll be a confirmation in your life and every pronounced blessing will receive a performance in your life in jesus name father in jesus name will bless you what a loving god you are what a merciful god you are what a compassionate god you are that you want us to forget everything of the past as you renew our lives you give forgiveness to those who have repented and i pray the assurance of that forgiveness will be real in every life in jesus name lord i pray real conversion heavenly conversion mighty conversion for salvation forgiveness freedom grant everyone in jesus name lord put a barrier between us and sin that sin will see us as strangers and we will see sin as foreigner and stranger and we will not know sin we will not recognize sin we will not welcome sin make us dead unto sin in jesus name lord keep us held everyone here lord i pray your hand will touch everyone now your healing made available to everyone now i pray lord whatever the name of the sickness we are healed by the stripes of jesus and all those people in our districts even those who are not able to come today i pray that right now as you heal the servant of the centurion at a distance i send forth your healing word unto them heal them in jesus name wife husband child member anyone either in the hospital now or at home now lord i pray your unfailing word your unfailing power will get to them now heal them in jesus name and those who have come today maybe they just managed to come they have pain they have sickness they don't have the sickness again lord visit and touch everyone as we went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil heal all your people in jesus name lord i pray all desirable blessings everything we desire your grant unto us now 
all the aspirations of your people desires of your people all the expectation they will not go back home in vain fulfill the expectation in jesus name sanctify those who are saved empower those who are sanctified and lord take all the defeat of the past take everything away in jesus name everywhere we go will trample on the works of the devil they are all destroyed they are all destroyed give your people glorious victory in jesus name make everyone 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 my brother there my sister there my son my daughter everyone there make everyone victorious and more than a conqueror in jesus name what you have done for other people in all these global crusades repeat that in every life confirm it lord confirm it lord it is done it is done for me for me for me it is done in jesus name god bless you he has answered your prayer Brethren, the psalmist said in Psalm 5, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. Brethren, let us look up unto the Lord and worship him this morning and exalt his name. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Let's glorify his name. He is God in heaven, and besides him, there is no other. 
praise him for bringing you here today in his presence. Thank God for being with you throughout the days that gone by. And thank God for the wonderful things he's been doing in your life, your Christian life. Magnify the name of the Lord. There are a lot of reasons why we need to praise God when we come together. Our God is great and our God is mighty. Thine, O Lord, the scripture says, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Brethren, praise the Lord for his greatness. Praise the Lord for his power. Praise the Lord for his glory, his victory, his majesty. Lift up your voices. Let it ring in the courts of heaven as we join the host of heaven to praise our God. Worship him this morning and bless his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Our God is a good God. And our God is mighty in power. And great things the Lord has been doing in our midst. In all these months gone by, the Lord has been visiting us at different times, at different places. And the Lord has opened heavens and showered his blessing upon us. Let us bless the name of the Lord again and thank him for all the crusades we have had in the past. For the mighty things the Lord has done. Great things the Lord will still do. For the Lord has not finished with us. Praise his holy name. With grateful hearts, worship him. Magnify the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. This is the week we have been looking forward to. This is the week that the Lord again will visit us in great and mighty way. And that is why we are going to pray and we are going to ask the Lord open the heavens again and let it come down. In Zechariah chapter 10 in verse 1, the word of God says, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field to everyone grass in the field the lord will locate you during this crusade and the lord will visit you and the lord will bless you mightily in jesus name there's going to be abundance abundance of the goodness of god there's going to be abundance of the blessing of god there's going to be souls that will come into the kingdom because of the visitation let us lift up our voices this morning and pray that all that heaven has prepared and all that God would want to do, he will have his way. The Lord will have his way in our midst. Pray. Commit the program into the hands of the Lord because God is ready and God is willing and God is prepared and his servant is prepared. There is going to be mighty visitation upon our lives. Pray. Pray, brethren. Ask the Lord to visit us. In Jesus' name, we pray. The psalmist said in Psalm 29, in verse 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people. Amen? And the Lord will bless his people with peace. There is going to be peace in this nation. There is going to be nothing that will disturb the plans and purpose of God throughout this week in Jesus' name. Let us open our mouth and decree it. Lord, you have said in your word that you will bless your people with peace. 
that throughout the program, there will be peace in the nation. The peace that comes from God, the peace that only God can give, it will be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that the Spirit of God will be in absolute control. Commit everything into the hands of the Lord. Commit the location, commit the arrangements, commit everything, the publicity, everything. God will lead and God will guide us. And by his grace, we will cooperate and everything will work according to God's own plan and purpose. In Jesus' name, we pray this morning, heavens will be open upon us. And while you're here, you're praying, you're asking the Lord, the Lord will speak to you today. You will hear the voice of the Lord. The Lord will minister to you, and every one of our lives will be transformed in Jesus' name. We are not going to go back the same way we came. Because the Lord God of heaven has something special he wants to do in every one of our lives. And that's why, like the psalmist said in Psalm 106 in verse 4, you are praying and you're saying, remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. Oh, visit me with thy salvation. Talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord to remember you. You may be in the crowd, but you're not lost. The Lord knows where you are. The Lord knows you're here. And the Lord brought you here by His Spirit, specially to do something, something definite in every one of our lives. Asking, Lord, remember me. Remember my situation. Remember my circumstance, Lord. Favor me. Favor me, Lord. Favor me, Lord. And the Lord will favor you this morning because the Lord will locate you and the Lord will visit you. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. We've come here for a purpose. We have come here to be with the Lord. We have come here just to worship him, to exalt his name. And we know that the Lord will touch and transform our lives. He will never leave us the same way we came. No. He's a good God. He's a gracious God. He's a loving Father. He's a mighty God. For every time the Lord gathers us together, He has a definite purpose. He has a definite plan. He has something specific that He wants to do in our lives. Just yield yourselves into the hands of the Lord this morning and ask Him to have His way. Tell the Lord, have your way in my life this morning, Lord melt me and mold me and fill me with your presence and with your power let your grace enrich my life talk to the lord talk to the lord talk to the lord in prayer because great things the lord will do in our midst this morning in jesus name we pray there are many people that will be coming for the first time in our midst. We're going to pray that the service and the experience they will have with the Lord this morning will situate them squarely in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer. All our visitors, all the people we are bringing, as they come and experience the uniqueness of this fellowship with the Lord, their lives will never remain the same. The Almighty God will establish them in the kingdom, will establish them in the faith, and they will continue to live for the Lord and to serve the Lord all the days of their lives. Commit them, everyone, visitors and members and leaders, everyone, let the Lord bless and enrich our lives greatly this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. The servant of the Lord, God will use him greatly. The Lord has been using him in the past. This morning, the Spirit of God will use him in a very, very special way to bless us in Jesus' name. Commit him into the hands of the Lord. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. The word of God says, Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. We are going to pray that this nation will never remain the same in Jesus' name. All over the nation this morning, where the scripture is read in truth, and God is worshipped in honor, the Lord will be in absolute control in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our great God in heaven, Father, we thank you for this worship service. And we're praying that as we commence, your spirit will guide and lead us in everything. And your name alone will be glorified. For in Jesus' name, we pray. We shall remain standing as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, number 249. Gospel hymns and songs, number 249. Come, sing the praise of Jesus. Sing his love with hearts aflame. Sing his wondrous birth of Mary. When to save the world he came, 